Okay. Hi, uh, everyone. Uh, can you hear me? Hi, Lizzy. Hello. Ah, yeah, okay. We can hear you. Okay. Yeah, okay, okay, cool. Uh, okay, so uh, today's training is going to be about the um, HMI introduction uh, for the solid square tide inverters, uh, which is the LCD display of the inverter. So we will show you like uh, the detailed information and settings in it. And this will be a general version. Uh, like, so we take like three phase 5 to 20 K 5G as an example. And uh, there, there may be like minor difference uh, between like the 5 to 20 K version and other versions and maybe the uh, newer versions of the firmware, uh, but um, they're just minor difference. So uh, you can take this as a reference and then also refer to the uh, user menus of uh, each inverters and then um, uh, take it work. And so this is the uh, main structures of the LCD display. So when you power up the inverter, uh, you will see this uh, main page it will display the current like, generation, uh, the power of the inverter and the time on the inverter and also the status of the inverter. So normally you will see the generating and otherwise you will see some like alarm codes um, uh, together with some uh, alarms. And then uh, when you press the enter button, uh, you will have access to the main menu. And we have four sections here. So information, settings, and advanced information, advanced settings. Uh, information and settings, they are not protected by the password. So uh, any, anyone can go, through, go into those sections to check the um, detailed information. And the advanced info and the advanced settings, they are protected by password. And uh, we will not expect like normal customers to enter those uh, sections, but only for some like, uh, installers and like solid technicians. And here, uh, so we prepared a like, diagram for the, for the structure of the uh, settings and also the sub sections of those settings. And this is based on the 5 to 20 K. So uh, you can also refer to this diagram uh, later when you've got the slides and then uh, to check what, uh, what functions you want to find. And then uh, this is uh, about the information. So when you enter the information of the inverter, uh, you will see like all the necessary information for the like DC side, also the AC side, for example, the uh, DC input voltage and current from your uh, PV strings. And then also the AC grid voltage, AC grid current, and uh, the inverter status. Uh, so normally it will be generating, and unless you have some alarm codes, and then the power, so this is an inverter uh, output AC power and then grid frequency as well. And then uh, you will see the uh, generation like records for to the total generation and for the generation of this month, generation of last month, today and yesterday. And then you will see the inverter as the numbers. And so, so, uh, so you can also check this number from the nameplate can also check that from the LCD. And then uh, the export P and export I. So uh, when you enable the like internal EPM function by connecting a meter or CT, and then uh, those two parameters will show you the like, power and the current that you are exporting to the grid. So only when you connect the uh, meter or CT, so you enable the internal EPM function. And then the uh, work mode. Um, so this is uh, related to the grid standard code. So uh, maybe some of the standards have the uh, working modes enabled. So it will maybe display the vote quad or vote bar. Uh, but for most of the standards, it will only show you like none. So it means you don't have some advanced working modes enabled. And then uh, the DRM mode. Uh, this is demand response mode, like mainly for Australia. So, uh, so for other countries, I think you don't need to worry about this. Uh, 
Uh, normally it will display zero eight or something like that. And then the 12 is generation consumption. Um, so after you connected the meter, uh, the smart meter connected to the inverter, you are able to see the uh, PV generation and also the load consumption. And um, in that case, it will be displayed here. And also you can also see those data in the monitoring system once you connect it to the uh, solid monitoring system. And then uh, the next section is about setting. So uh, this is to set the time and set the address. Set the inverter time, it should be based on the local time zone. And one thing to mention is that if you are connecting to the like source monitoring system, you need to change the time zone on the plant. Um, so you need to change the time zone for the plant on the portal. Uh, because uh, if you don't change it, the inverter time will be updated to Beijing time zone. Uh, so in that case, if you change the inverter time on the LCD, and then after five minutes, when the um, like monitoring is going to upload the data, then your inverter time will be updated again based on the setting on the uh, monitoring system. So uh, this is very uh, important. You need to set the inverter time on the LCD and also set the time on the uh, plant information when you uh, create the plant. And then uh, set the address. So this address is mainly for the for communicating with other like uh, accessories like monitoring device or the EPM. So if you have a data logging stick, so it's a one inverter per uh, stick. So you need to make sure the inverter slave address is zero one, unless uh, otherwise they will not communicate with each, with each other. And then uh, if you are using like data logging box or EPM, then you need to like um, set different slave address for different inverters. And they should be like in sequence. So there are one, there are two, there are three like this in sequence. And uh, the next part is about advanced information. So this part is protected by password. And the first section is about allow message. So uh, our after sales engineers might uh, want uh, the end, uh, end user customers to uh, check the allow message on the inverter so that they can uh, know what is going on with the inverter. And this part will show the recent alarms happening in the inverter and up to like 100 messages will be caved inside the LCD. And then the next is about the rounding message. Uh, rounding message is mainly used for like solid uh, technicians to identify the, the current operating information of the inverter. For example, the uh, standard number. So uh, this is this this will show you the current effective grid standard in the inverter. Sometimes you may think you already changed some standard, but uh, actually it is not. So uh, you need to go, go to here and then to find out what is the current effective grid standard inside the inverter. And then the temperature. So this is the internal temperature, uh, but it's not the internal ambient temperature. So it's actually the temperature near the IGBT. It's the hot, hottest part of the, of the inverter. And if it goes like up to like 80 or 90 degrees, so uh, it is just normal, so you don't need to worry about those high temperature. And then the V bus and middle V bus, uh, this is a voltage on the bus capacitors. So this is uh, used by the solids, like hardware engineers to identify the uh, problems of the, of the inverter. And then the PF ratio, so this is a current effective power factor settings in the inverter. So normally it will be one. And then power limit, uh, this is the percentage of output. So uh, if you are connecting to a smart meter or if you are connecting to a, a EPM device, or maybe you have some external uh, control device to control the inverter output, um, 
uh, you will find out that this percentage is like always changing. So this is normal if your your invert is uh, controlled. And normally it will be like um, uh, one hundred and ten percent for IC models, and for UL models, I think it will be always like one hundred percent shown here. And the grid filter numbers. So uh, this is some grid filter settings on the for the for the AC side, and uh, this is used for our after sales engineers to uh, solve the uh, grid interference issues. Uh, but it's just a uh, a way a way to solve it and then uh, the next is about the uh, yeah again running message so uh, the relay protect is a, is a relay check function like enabled or disabled uh, normally those protections are always enabled so you, you don't need to uh, worry about that and I leak protect is the leakage current protection and ground pro uh, this is for the pv iso protection and then another one is mpvd parallel um, so this is a function used in the lab that they will synchronize the multiple mpvts as one mpvt so like if you have multiple mpvt inverters they will work like they only have one mpvt and then uh, generate power. So for customers, actually, we, we will not expect customers to use those functions because uh, this will you will lose the benefits of you having like multiple MPPT. And then another one, MPPT CV mode. Uh, this is also for lab use only, and it's uh, called constant input voltage. Yeah, it, Point twelve. What, what do you mean point twelve? Yeah. Never mind. Ah, okay. Ah, uh, you mean this? Yeah. So the generation and consumption. So, uh, if you have the meter connected to the inverter, so that meter can uh, record the consumption generation data and then show it here. So if you do not have the uh, meter connected, then it will not display the consumption energy. So you must have the meter connected. In that case, you will have the consumption energy. And then uh, MPVD saving mode, okay. So this is for lab use only and it will, so it's like the MPPT will not try to track the like track the voltage based on the uh, based on the IV curve of the of the PV strains. It will fix at one uh, point, uh, for example, like three hundred volt. Then it will fix at that point. So not very useful in in a real case. So uh, just leave it there. And then uh, the ground voltage. Um, ground voltage is actually not actually the ground voltage between the hot line and the, and the ground. So it's the it's a ground voltage on the on the EV ISO or detection circuit. It's actually for the for the DC side. So uh, if the inverter is operating, then this ground voltage is not minimis and normally you will see maybe like hundreds of volts on these parameters and then don't you don't need to worry uh, those hundreds of voltage are uh, actually indicates a very good um, PV installation uh, no the grid filter is not used like that so grid filter is only used for when your inverter has some problem. Uh, for example, the grid interference uh, alarm. It, it is not used to control the grid input voltage. And then uh, there are also some other parameters here. 
Um, well, so those are actually only for like solid software engineers. So only they understand like what, what is going on with those parameters and um, we don't need to care about those. And then uh, next is version. So uh, when you enter the version section of the advanced information, uh, maybe you will only see the two digits, which is a model number uh, for, the, for the inverter. But um, in most cases, our after sales engineers will require you uh, to give us the software version. So you need to long press the up and down, the two buttons like for three seconds, and then it will display the uh, software version. And then the, there will be a six digits of the number. The first two digits, uh, like AA indicates the HMI version, which is the uh, LCD uh, firmware. And then the BB indicates the main DSP version, uh, which is a control board inside the inverter. And then uh, you also see those um, energy records for like specific day, month, or year. I can check it here. And daily records. So this is some like setting changing history and it's only for solid software engineer and not for um, us to understand. And come in. Okay. How long the data will be stored in the inverter? Mm. Well, for that, I need, I need to check, but I think it will save like, like over, over the lifetime of the, of the inverter. Because you can select the, the um, years, like up and down for, for many years. But I will check for the, for the details. And then also the communication data. So it's a, it's a communication like commands between the HMI and DSP. And it's also for software engineers only. Uh, you don't need to uh, know that as well. And warning message. So uh, warning, uh, the difference between the alarm message and the warning message is that the alarm message will affect the normal generation. Uh, it will stop the inverter, uh, but the uh, warning message will not. Uh, warning message will only give you a, a warning, like for example, the inverter has a high temperature or uh, there, are, there is some kind of surge alarm, a surge uh, happened before. So those are like warning message, uh, but they will not affect the uh, normal generation of the of the inverter. And then uh, the advanced setting. Uh, so this part contains a lot of like settings for um, special functions. So I also make a list at the end of the uh, slides so that you can uh, know for each function, so that which part you should go to. Um, so first, the select standard. Uh, so normally, the inverters will have ha have been like preset a uh, standard uh, after it comes out of the factory, um, and outside we don't expect customers to change it outside. But um, if uh, we want to solve some problems, we may want your customers to. Uh, modify the setting, modify the standard, and or modify the parameters to make sure the inverters can work based on uh, local regulations. So you can go, go into this advanced setting and then select the standard to do that. And um, yeah, and also we have a user defined standard. So that can be used uh, for like customized protection limits. For example, the over voltage, under voltage, um, over frequency, under frequency settings um, for, for the inverter. And here uh, I put an example for the EN50549L. So this standard is uh, generally used in uh, Europe. And so you can enter the advanced setting and select the standard as uh, this one and then uh, you can see all those parameters. 
and those parameters are like um, changeable, so you can adjust those parameters uh, within this range. And also we have uh, explanations for each parameters here. And so that you can uh, refer to the meanings of, of those uh, parameters. Uh, but so EN50549L is a very like powerful standard. So most of the parameters can be changed by the customer. Uh, but for some other standards, uh, we only have like preset like, fixed parameters and we do not allow customers to change it uh, because that may um, uh, violate the local regulations. So you can refer to the exact settings inside the inverter to see like which standard supports changing, which standard does not. And then the grid on off. So uh, in this set section, you have actually three options. So on, off, and stop. So turn on, um, you, you can see grid on is turn on the inverter. And then turn off the inverter. Uh, when you grid off, it means the inverter AC relays will be like uh, open. So like physically disconnected from the, uh, between the inverter and the grid. And for the stop, the stop uh, function is just to uh, stop the generation. Uh, the inverter will stop generating, but it will keep the AC relay still closed. So that is the difference between grid off and grid stop. And another one is a 24 edge switch. Uh, this is to enable or disable the 24 hour consumption monitoring function. Um, uh, we, we will give you like further explanations on the last page of the slide. Uh, so, yeah. And then uh, the fourth one is clear energy. Uh, this will clear the EL data in the inverter. So it will wipe out all the history generation data. So you should be like careful on this and do not like press it like by mistake. Okay, that's basically the runtime of the Yeah, it's, uh, after you clear runtime, what do you mean runtime? So um, we, we don't have the parameters for runtime of the inverter, I think. Uh, only the generations, something like that. So this will only clear the uh, generations. Uh, I think we don't have this parameter inside the inverter, but maybe maybe on the monitoring system you have. Um, then the monitor system, if you press this clear energy button, it will not uh, clear the energy on the on the monitoring system. So you will still see the uh, history data on the on the monitoring system unless you uh, connect another another uh, data logging stick. Then reset password. Uh, yeah, it's easy to understand. So you reset the password for advanced setting as well as the uh, advanced information. And however, uh, the, the 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 original password, like the factory password, and the super admin password is still valid. So if you change that, you will have two password uh, valid for this setting. And here, uh, the power control. Um, so in this section, in this part, you can change the inverter's uh, max output power. So you can set the percent to uh, limit to the inverter. Uh, so for example, you have a 5K inverter. If you set the percentage to 50%, then the inverter will only generate like 2.5K. However, this setting is not a power of saving function. So uh, your setting is only valid uh, with uh, this time. So after the DC power is lost, like tomorrow, uh, then it will back to like 5K. Uh, if you want to save this setting, you should use the 
out p with restore. So if you set this, then you will have the power of saving function and it will be like always valid on, until the next change you made on the inverter. And also uh, you can set the reactive power. Uh, you can set a certain uh, power factor. So it said to set the reactive power, but uh, in fact it is to set the PF, the power factor of the inverter. So you can set from like 0 0.8 to 0 0.8. And again, so this section, this setting is not power of saving. So if you want to save the setting, uh, you should use the react power with restore. So use this one. And then the next two are not used for customers, so we will not go details about those. Uh, can we check the running time? Um, I think. What if we're using load panels? For example, to check harmonics, we will have to load the panels to 80% of capacity. What if? So, to check the harmonics, you need to make sure the inverter is running like, like full power or 50% power. So, you cannot mm, use this function to limit the inverter. Uh, actually, my question is, Mr. Judo, the yeah. thing is, we have to check harmonics. We'll have to uh, load the panels to 80% of the capacity of the inverter. But certain customers are willing to upgrade the system in future. So they don't want to go for a smaller inverter and then sell it and get go for a new one. So what they want is, for example, if they want a 3 kilowatt system, but in future they are looking to upgrade to five kilowatts. So what they ask is they want to buy a five kilowatts uh, inverter, but still load panels for three kilowatts. But in this case, if we don't meet the requirement of 80% capacity, then there will be a problem in, when it comes to harmonics testing. So can I use this function to limit the output of the inverter so that, uh, for example, if I limit the output to three kilowatts, can I load three kilowatt panels and get the harmonics passed? Uh, well, uh, actually, for this question, I recently I just checked with our audio engineers. So they said uh, if you use this uh, settings to change the power percentage, um, maybe the testing data are not um, in accordance with the like the normal inverter, like one hundred percent. So uh, it's not recommended to use this function to pass the Hummer test, right? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, right, and then uh, calibrate energy. Yeah. So uh, this is yeah, mainly for some um, after-sales inverters. So if customer, if our after-sales engineer send you a new inverter and then you also want to keep the total energy data on your old inverters, then you can calibrate the energy data on the new inverter so that uh, to, to match with your uh, previous inverter. Yeah. And then another is special settings. Um, for this, uh, most of the settings are uh, in accordance with the rounding message. Uh, for example, the first one, the grid filter setting, uh, you can change the grid filter parameters uh, when you have the uh, grid interference issues. And then uh, the relay protect, yeah, this is to enable or disable the relay check protection. But of course, we, we would not recommend you disable it. Uh, those protections are always enabled. And the ID protect and ground protect and also grade NTF02. Um, this is not used for customer. This may be some uh, like old issues and were already solved. So uh, no longer use this setting. And then the point uh, six, which is MPVD parallel mode. Yeah, so this you can enable or disable the MPVD parallel uh, function. And cost voltage mode. Yeah, so uh, this is to enable the the input voltage function. And I think it, when you enter that, you, you need also to uh, define the input voltage uh, at that at that cost input voltage function. 
Um, so this is just to change the grid filter set. It's just to change the, um, for example, the AC uh, capacitors, AC inductors, the parameters, so that it can um, perfectly match your grade to make sure there's no like unwanted like output of current or something like that. It's normally if you inverters can operate like normally, so you should not change this grid filter. And normally this grid filter set is disabled, so uh, you just just ignore that and do not change it. Inverter from Rogers website. Yes, yeah. For that, um, we can we can talk about this later. So how to turn off the inverter from Rogers website? Um, this is a function made for installer level account and. Uh, for the end user level account, we, we do not have, we do not support this function. Uh, we can later talk about this. Anyway, um, so the VFRT set, so this is a voltage frequency uh, right through function. Um, this should not be changed by the customer because uh, when you select the standard, you select the correct standard for your country, uh, the corresponding like voltage rise through or frequency rise through uh, function will be dis will be enabled or disabled correspondingly. So uh, do not change this. And then uh, another two settings in the special settings are uh, when you enter the IG zero COMP set, uh, you'll find the I leak limit and also the RISO limit. The ILIC limit is the for the leakage uh, protection there are four along. Uh, that is for the continuous rescue current detection. Um, you can increase it to, uh, to avoid some frequent alarms of ILIC pro there are four, um, but you need to make sure it is um, following the IC standard, the IC 62109 uh, standard, you need to make sure they are within the uh, limit. And the RISO limit is for uh, PV ISO detection, so PV insulation detection, uh, when the PV resistance is lower than 200K, uh, it will give you the alarm. Uh, so those two parameters are the default values. So, uh, but uh, maybe this is only for like 5 to 20k. So when you enter the maybe the 25 to 50k or 40 to 70k, they have different default values. And uh, normally we will not uh, recommend customer to change it. And then another one is AFSI set. So this is to turn on the turn on of the AFSI function, and you can also choose the AFSI sensitivity. Um, this setting is only uh, effective on the AFCI version of inverters. So if the inverter does not support the uh, AFCI, then uh, yeah, this setting is not uh, effective. And here is the STD mode setting. Uh, so uh, the first one is working mode set. Uh, the working mode set is related to the standard code. So for different standards, you may have different options uh, for the special working mode. Uh, but uh, for most of standards, you only have like thumb, so you don't have working mode. Uh, this is based on like local uh, requirements. Um, MPPT parallel mode. So, for example, you have multiple uh, MPVT inverter, and then if you turn on this MPVT parallel mode, all the inputs will uh, like operate like this, like the like the same one. So it will not track like different uh, input strains based on different like irradiance or shadings. It will all track the same. 
So it's only for used in the lab that they have the DC source and they want to connect the DC, same DC source to like multiple channels of the inverter. In that case, they can save one DC source. So that's why they turn on this, uh, develop this MPPD parallel mode. And we do not expect customers to use it. Okay, um, so the working mode, the first one is the volt watt. Uh, this is the inverter will uh, reduce the output power uh, based on the increasing grid voltage. And for different standards, you may have different uh, uh, V1, V2, V3, V4, or P1 to P4. So they have different uh, thresholds or they have different range. Uh, and take the EM50549L as example. Uh, you have those uh, setting range and also the uh, setting parameters. So also maybe some of the parameters are fixed because we need to comply with the local requirements. So the, some of those are uh, fixed and not the support to change it. And customer is not allowed to change it as well. And another is volt bar. So this is the uh, inverter where output reactive power uh, based on um, increasing grid voltage or uh, decreasing grid voltage. And also it has different um, settings and different setting ranges as well. And another one is fixed PF. So this is the inverter wall uh, output with a fixed power factor. Um, the setting range is also 0, 8 to 0, 8, and default value is PF 0 equals 1. Um, this fixed PF actually have the same function as the PF setting in the power control. Uh, but the, the difference is like mm, when you enable the fixed PF, so you are like working in a, a working mode, and you are not able to uh, enable like, for example, the uh, volt, volt watt function. Uh, but the setting in the power control is like a general PF setting. In that case, you can also enable the volt watt, uh, have two settings enabled at the same time. Okay, um, another two working modes are the reactive power. So it's like um, you output a fixed reactive power I can say it as like 60% or uh, negative 60%, which equals to the PF uh, there are eight. And another is power PF. So this is change the power factor based on different output power of the of the inverter. Um, this one, uh, sorry. So this uh, two functions are normally not used by customers or anywhere. So well, we don't know which country actually want the inverters to enable those two. Uh, but anyway, uh, we support those uh, two working modes here. And then uh, another are the power rate limit in the STD mode settings. So this is the ramp rate limit. Uh, you can set uh, from 5% to 600%. Uh, this is like how many percent of rated power can be uh, ramped up per minute. So for example, you set this as 10%, uh, then uh, 10 minutes, the inverter can ramp up the power from 0% to 100%. Um, this setting is actually always uh, preset uh, based on the standard, so um, customers do not need to change this. And then freq rate setting, this is a frequency rate setting. Uh, when the inverter, uh, when the grid frequency increases, like over frequency, then the inverter will derate the, the power. You will have the F star, the F stop. So it's like when the frequency reaches the F start, it will start to derate the power until it reaches the F stop, then the inverter will um, stop or reach the 0%. So 
So, so this is also standard related. Uh, for different standards, they have different uh, preset parameters inside. And uh, we also do not expect customers to change this. And here is a 10 minute voltage set. Uh, this is the 10 minutes average voltage limit. Mm. So this is to define the uh, average vo AC voltage like for each 10 minutes uh, interval. And this is only be used for some great standard. For example, Australia. Australia will set this and um, sometimes customers want to change this to a higher value to prevent some uh, over voltage alarm. And also uh, maybe some European countries uh, with, that might want to use this. And the point five, the three TAU settings. Um, I don't know why the name is like this, but this is from a standard. So uh, it's the ramp up rate of reactive power. So for example, if three TAU equals 10 seconds, the reactive power will ramp up to 95% uh, within 10 seconds. So this is um, defining the standard. So um, we also do not expect customers to change it. And the point six is the initial settings. Uh, you can, so after you select the, the standard, uh, like change another like, different standard, uh, you can also use this initial settings to reset the working modes, reset the power rate, reset the frequency ratings or 10 minute voltage uh, to reset those settings to make sure they are like the factory settings. Mm, yeah, so here are the restore settings. I told uh, make sure your inverters are back to the factory um, state. Um, HMI update. So you can enter this section and then press the enter button and then to perform the HMI update with the upgrade stick, the external upgrade stick. But normally I think um, we can also do like a remote update um, through the monitoring system as well. Uh, no, so the upgrade stick is not the same with the data login stick. So data login stick is for monitoring. Um, if you have the inverter connected to the monitoring system, we can also do update uh, through the monitoring system like remotely. Uh, but uh, we also have a special uh, stick for on-site upgrade the inverter to upgrade the inverter. Um, and that is only for our software, after, uh, solid after sales engineers only. But if you, for some special cases, we can also send you some um, sticks for update on site if you want to. Okay, uh, the next one is the internal EPM set. Um, so, internal EPM set uh, is like the EPM control function is in, built inside the inverter, but you also need to connect the external meter or CT to do the like power sampling on the grid connection point or the node branch circuit. So the first section is, is the mod, model select. So you have multiple uh, options. The off means that you don't, you don't enable this function. And then metering grade means you have a meter connected in the uh, main grid circuit, which is a grid connection point. And then meter in load, uh, this is like a meter connected in the load branch circuit. So if you have a meter, you can connect the meter in two positions. And current sensor, uh, current sensor is this section, this uh, setting is only for single phase inverter. So only single phase inverter can connect the current sensor uh, on the, at the grid connection point uh, to do the sampling. And also for the single phase inverter, you have like different versions, like CT version and also the meter version. 
um, you need to identify those two versions um, during placing an order. And then uh, consumption monitoring. So this is for 24 hour consumption monitoring function. And you must have a meter and you must place the meter in the grid uh, connection point. So uh, yeah, this is for the consumption monitoring function. And then uh, after you choose the mode, you can you need also define the uh, backflow power. So it's like how much power you are allowed to export into the grade. If you set it as zero, then you have a zero injection system. And then the failsafe on off. Uh, failsafe function, uh, so in case of a safety cable or the meter, meter com communication cable lost um, or disconnected somehow, well, the inverter will stop generating, like reduce to zero output. So in that case, it can prevent any um, excess export power to the grid. Um, but this, is, this function is not required by most of the countries. Uh, as we know, only UK have a standard, like G100. So, so they require this function in the standard. And uh, if customers uh, do not, are not in the UK, you cannot, you, you don't need to like enable this function. But uh, I actually, I, I would suggest you to enable this function because this can tell you um, if your cables are losing or not connected correctly. And then uh, the fourth point is backflow work mode. So there are one, it has two modes, there are one and there are two. There are one means the average limiting. So the, uh, because it's a three phase system, right? So um, the average limiting means uh, you will consider the sum of the uh, three phase power. And then there are two is the lowest phase limiting. So the limiting will based on the lowest phase of your system. So that are the difference. And uh, there are one, the average limiting should be the default setting in the inverter. And then uh, external EPM set. Um, so when you use the ex external export power manager of Solis, uh, you need to enable this function. So this is a failsafe. This is also the failsafe function. You must enable this failsafe function to make sure uh, uh, they communicate with each other correctly. Uh, the same, uh, the requirement actually is only in UK and for other countries, there's no standard document stating that this requirement is necessary. And restart HMI. So when you press this button, uh, it will refresh the HMI display. It can solve some uh, display bugs or issues. And debug parameters uh, only for solid, uh, software engineers and don't, you don't need to understand that. And DSP update, um, the same as HMI update, it's to perform the DSP update. Uh, you need also to press the ENT button before press the button on the upgrade stick. Uh, for some old inverters, like the 40 to 70K old solid inverters, um, actually you cannot find the DSP update because for those inverters, you don't need to press the button. You can directly start the uh, operations on the upgrade stick. Uh, that is the difference. But, but for, for the like 4G or 5G inverters, you will always need to press the button. And even for some large, like for example, 80K or even higher levels of the inverters, uh, you need to se select the main DSP and also the slave DSP. So the different options to update the DSP. But the process is the same. It's just that select different like, options in the LCD. 
and compensation set. Uh, this is to do some calibrate, for example, the power and also the voltage. Um, so, for example, the voltage parameter. So, if you find out the um, AC voltage displayed on the inverter LCD uh, is different from the actual you, the actual voltage that you measured on the AC terminal of the inverter, then uh, you can use this parameter to calibrate the voltage. So, plus or minus five volt, you can make sure they are. Uh, in the in the same pace. And fine test. Um, so for those models with fan, uh, when you press this button, you it will start to uh, round the fan to make sure the fan is uh, operating correctly. So this function is mainly for the um, factory testing function. So also, you can use it outside to check if the fan is uh, working correctly. Okay, uh, here are the last pages. I prepared some um, setting paths and comments for um, some generally used purpose of the, of the inverter. Uh, for example, uh, when you want to check the firmware version, you can go through the advanced info password version and then long press up and down to show the six digits code. Um, also, when you want to check the inverter ACDC information, you can go to the information. And also, I want to say that uh, sometimes our software after sales engineers will request those necessary information uh, for their uh, analyze. So uh, it's better that. Uh, customers can have a video like recording the in, the information section and like go through the section and then take a video. In that case, uh, our engineers can uh, analyze the details. Yeah, okay. Yeah, of course, these slides I think we can send later. And then, um, yeah, also check the alarm message and also check the rounding message. So those three, uh, you can always take a video and then send to our after sales engineers and then uh, they can know what is going on with your inverter and then provide you the corresponding solutions. And then, uh, yeah, select grid code. It's in advanced setting and select standard. And so normally uh, we do not expect on-site change. <coughs> so, uh, if, if our engineers ask you to change some uh, standards, they will tell you like which code you should select. And then another is change the power output percent. So uh, yeah, it's in the power control and you, you can always use the output P with restore. So it has the power of saving function. And so uh, one thing to mention is that um, for example, some place, like in some place in Australia, oh, they will not allow you to have like 110 110% of AC overload capability. Um, they will only give you like 100% to connect to the grid. Uh, in that case, customers can use this function to reduce the percentage to 100% and then, or, or lower percent, so that the, you can get the system connected to the to the grid. Yeah, so this function can be used in this case. And also you can uh, change the output power factor in the power control as well. And then uh, select the working mode. Uh, you can select the working mode in the STD uh, mode setting and here so the setting is bounded to the standard code so for different standard you will have different uh, available working modes inside it and also you have different default parameters and you should not change it unless you are told by our solid technicians or uh, guided by our technicians uh, so that you can um, change the correctness 
uh, parameters for it because uh, if you change the different parameters then what you need then the inverter may uh, limit the generation or uh, produce like unexpected reactive power and then um, it will be difficult for our after sales engineers to identify what is going on with the inverter and then also change the 10 minutes over voltage limit so uh, this is um, only available for Australia and some European countries like Italy, Belgium, Germany and also some uh, EM50549 code and especially for Australia so uh, most of the Australian grade it has a very high voltage so in that case um, customers will want to uh, increase the 10 minute voltage set uh, to a higher level to prevent the uh, over voltage alarm and for the internal EPM function uh, with smart meter so if you have a smart meter connected uh, you can go into the internal EPM set first you select the mode as metering load or meeting grade uh, based on the actual installed position of the meter and then you set the backflow power and then set the backflow work mode and also the fail safe function and also for if you have a single phase inverter with a smart meter uh, you should select the meter type as well there will be a setting in the internal EPM set that you should choose the correct model of the meter as well and if you have an internal EPM function with smart sensor, uh, in that case, you have a single phase inverter. Uh, you need to select the mode as current sensor. And then in the next level of the, of the setting, you will find the CT sampling ratio. You need to make sure that sampling ratio is the same with your uh, current sensor you use on the inverter. Normally, it will be like 3001. And then also you need to set the backflow power and also the fail safe function. Yeah. And also uh, one thing is about enable the DRM function. Uh, DRM function is only for Australia and the UK and some uh, European countries in the future. So uh, you don't need to turn it on unless it, it is required by your uh, local distribution uh, operators and then you have to have like uh, external contactors or some kind of logical board connected to the inverter connect to the DRM board at the bottom of the inverter uh, in that case you, you can enable this function so we place this function very uh, setting like uh, in the initial settings so it's a uh, it, 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 so based on the name, it's not correct to pass, but um, yeah, the term on off is placed there. And then uh, 24 hour consumption monitoring uh, with smart meter. So if you want your inverters to uh, have consumption monitoring even at night, like to upload the consumption data to this monitoring system, even at night. So you need to first, you need to enable the 24 edge switch uh, in the advanced setting. So you enable that setting and then go into the internal EPM set, select the mode as consumption monitor. So with those two steps, uh, you can have the consumption data uploaded to the monitor system even at night. And uh, also you can enable both 24-hour consumption monitor function and the internal EPM function at the same time. Uh, well, that will require a different setting, but you can refer to the uh, inversion menu and for different, uh, for, for detailed uh, settings for that. And the, the uh, EPM, external EPM set. Uh, so one thing to mention is that if you have 5G EPM box, you need to select the 5G EPM. And for 2G EPM box, you need to select the other's EPM. And because those two EPM actually have different uh, fail-safe logic uh, in, the, in the firmware. And also if you find out that 
uh, you have a 5G EPM, but you cannot find the option 5G EPM in the inverter. So you need to contact the solids technicians to upgrade the inverter firmware to make sure it have the 5G EPM. Otherwise, the inverter cannot work with the 5G EPM. And then another is adjust the ILIC Pro Zero 4 threshold. <coughs> so if your inverter like always or like occasionally give you the ILIC Pro Zero 4 alarm, uh, it must be like there are four. So if it, if it's there are one or there are two, there are three, this setting is not useful. It must be there are four. And then you can change the eye leak limit. <clears throat> Even though we do not suggest you change, but uh, for some plants, you may have very serious leakage capacitance on the modules, the solar modules, and you will have a relatively higher uh, residual current in the in a rainy day that may like frequently trigger this protection. Uh, but the settings must be comply with the IEC standard. Um, well, uh, for the detailed threshold, uh, I cannot remember, but you can uh, try to find in the standard. <clears throat> or just contact our solids technicians to uh, set a correct value. And then uh, another is just the PV ISO threshold. Yeah, the RISO limit. So we do not suggest you change, but um, you can correspondingly like increase it a little bit to make sure you, it, uh, to, to decrease a little bit to make sure it does not give you a, a frequent PV ISO alarm. And then another one is the AFCI setting. Um, so it's only used on AFCI version uh, inverters, the firmware. Uh, you can change the AFCI uh, on off or the AFCI sensitivity. So that is the, yeah, that will be most of the uh, setting introductions. Yeah. And, okay. Okay, I see. Yeah, I see, yeah, there is and Travis already answered most of the questions. Um, a power has a capability. Yeah, okay. So uh, if you have any other questions, you can also stand here or address if you have any questions, you can ask as well. Uh, Travis, uh, uh, Judo, I have one question. Uh, yeah. For this uh, frequency derating and voltage watt uh, and voltage var mode, can this can be cited in user defined uh, country setting? Like if we are choosing user defined setting, so if we also want to enable this volt watt mode, can this be also enabled? Is it it's it it going to the work uh, work in user along with user defined setting? Yeah. So uh, if you have if you select the standard as like user defined, then um, so it's like a very basic uh, over voltage, under voltage protection, and it will not have those like uh, both watt or both bar functions. You cannot set that. Okay. So it is only limited to the country specific uh, grid code. So yeah, if yeah. the customer uh, choose those grid codes, then this volt watt, volt uh, uh, var and frequency derating and 10 minute voltage set, all this can be set accordingly. Yeah, yeah, right. So uh, can, we, can, we can list out those country standard also in which country standard this uh, uh, work mode would be function. So that can be gives an understanding then to choose the right country setting for those uh, uh, function because as far as uh, most of the country in asia pacific we are running with 50 hertz frequency so uh, in australia grid code is more or less a sometime also work in india so but for um, uh, any other uh, grid code also can have this function just uh, let us um, uh, list out those uh, information also so that will help us to do the troubleshooting on field yeah, yeah, we, we can share this information like internally. Yeah. Okay. We have a great error from 
Well, for over grade voltage one to five, well, for one and two, it should be the like first step and second step. And then there's three, I think it should be the 10 minutes over voltage. So, and there are four should be the transient over voltage. It's a fixed protection. And for example, if the voltage is increasing like a very fast, so it will give you like there are four. And as, there, as for there are five, uh, I know there is a there are five alarm, but it will not be showed up on most of the inverters. Maybe some, maybe the mini. So it's a it's a special special alarm. Uh, you can provide some details and maybe send us some emails about the alarm and about the inverters. You know, the firmware version as well, so that our after sales engineers can uh, understand. Yeah, I've never seen. Uh, yeah, I I, I I saw it. I saw there were five before once. Mm -hmm. But but that is only uh, after you upgrade the firmware, then you will not see that. So maybe it, that inverter has a very old firmware. Possibly. The PV yeah. ISO Pro 01 to 04, that's different current uh, steps uh, also. Yeah, but um, I never say there were three and there were four. I think only there were one and there were two. And also there is a PV middle ISO Pro, uh, but not there are three and there are four. Right. Uh, Jidua, can you answer a few of these questions here? Uh, how can I turn off the inverter from the monitoring website? Ah, uh, yeah, okay. Um, so let me, let me, sorry. Okay. So this function is only for some installer account and only for some installer account. Only the installer accounts uh, are authorized by the by Solarman to have this function. Otherwise, uh, the general installer account even does not have this function. And so it's like, so I have the super admin account for Solis and when you enter the Right. Um, okay. I think the oh, sorry. Just give me a second. I need to get the power for the for the. Uh, Hamza Saeed, did you get your MPPT parallel mode question answered? Can you respond in chat? All right, all right. Yeah, I'm back. Okay, thanks. Okay. Mm, I think the network is not so good. Yeah, okay. Let's see. So when you, for example, when you enter the device page, so this is a, this is a, I don't know what it is, 7K uh, in China. And then here you will find the device control. If your, if your installer account is authorized by Solarman, and then you will find the device control. And then Okay, and then, okay. yeah, here, the operation parameters, you can set it as on or off. So not all the installer account have this function, only the installer account that you send to us and then we get the uh, authorized from the, from Solarman, then the, then the under this device page, 
you are able to remotely on off the merger. Here is the device control here. Okay. Yeah. Okay. PV mid eye so called. Um, it's like so PV ISO Pro 01 and 02, which indicates the uh, PV installation uh, faults on the uh, inverter input terminal, the input, for example, MC4 connectors. And the PV middle ISO indicates there are some PV installation alarms in, in, uh, in your screen. So for example, the MC4 connectors between your panels in that case, we call it PV middle ISO alarm. So that is the difference. I'm over there looking for our sign calculations. Um, I think if you want to do that, you need to contact the, like solid service technicians. We need to like unregister the data logger and then you can use it for a new uh, new inversion now my question here is that certain dealers because we distribute uh, inverters in sri lanka so what happens is certain dealers try to register these uh, data loggers to the end user accounts and then at the end of the day they want to go for installer account so that what they want is they again want to remove these devices and then uh, add to their installer account and then they want to associate it. So in that case, can we remove it from the end user's uh, plan and again uh, add it to the installer's plan without getting help from Solid? Because it will be a big headache for you if they always come and ask you to remove this from another user and let them uh, reconfigure it. So is there any possibilities where the dealer itself will be able to remove it from the user's uh, and plan and add it to the installer plan and then associate to the user's plan. Well, what, 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 do, what do you mean like associate to... For example, we have a pro and a solid form, right? So yeah, yeah. In Sri Lanka, for example, in Sri Lanka, we used to distribute solids. So what happens here is dealers used to buy inverters from us. They never know the difference between these two. So what happens is they just uh, register an account under Solis Home and they assign the device to that user itself. So at the end of the day, if they make like 10 or 12 sites, they want to view them at once. So in that case, we'll have to go for Solis Pro, right? So yeah, in yeah. that case, if it's already registered to end user, that means Solis Home, can the dealer remove that from the user without asking help from Solis. That means he wants to remove uh, the device from the user's account and add it to his installer account and then associate user's account to his installer account. Uh, uh, actually... Mr. Mr. Uh, Judo, I can answer this question to him. Yeah. Mr. Uh, Sangmut, uh, sorry, I did not pronounce your name properly. Sorry for that. Yeah. So uh, for this, you can do one thing. You can create your installer account and you just need an, all the data logger serial numbers that should be there with you. And you can do a device receptant function can be used and all together you can put it in your installer account and you can map it. So uh, as an installer, you have a right to monitor their, uh, your uh, sold inverter plant as a single uh, login ID. But if you do, if uh, but you you cannot like if you want to make uh, already this uh, stick is registered to some customer and if you want to delete the only the user has a right to delete that stick or an installer account can delete the stick or if someone has forgot the password then you have to report it to the solace service then we can do that. Okay, this is my question. So in this case, uh, if if the installer wants to get that monitored under his uh, installer account. He can log into the user's account with the permission of the user and delete the device mm. from there and he can again add to the no need installer. to no need to no need to delete both the both the account can able to see the data so the home customer will going to monitor home account and the installer will going to log in as a pro account and he can monitor all planned in as a, in a single window 
So uh, no need to deal case, it anywhere. In this case, what I am asking is actually the dealer hasn't registered it to his install account. He has straight off uh, created an end user account and he has added the device to the end user's plan. Okay. So what he so wants he, is so dealer is, dealer so dealer can create a new account as in pro account. Okay, as an but he cannot account. add he can the device again to the pro, right? He can add. He can add. When, it once he create a pro account. account. It says no, but if he, he tries to add the same device to the pro account. It says it's already used in some other account. No, actually, you need to follow the different step. You don't need to register that uh, data logger again. You just need to uh, create all those. Um, uh, you need to get the all the data logger serial number and put okay. it into an Excel sheet. And uh, okay. under installer account, you will find an option device center and device receptant. So you need to just uh, map those uh, data logger serial number in the desired device receptant, and then all uh, serial num all those plants would be mapped under installer account. Uh, could you demonstrate that on this uh, uh, in your account that the option that you are speaking of? Uh, Judo, can you just go into device uh, center and can you show that device acceptance option on the top on the top just up on next to the plant center? Device here? No, on the top on the top device center the no, on the top on the oh, yeah ah, device okay. center. And you can see on the down uh, where the device control is there on the uh, just about the firmware upgradation, there is a device recipient on the oh, left hand sorry. side. Yeah, yeah, this, this one. Yeah, this, this option. So once we yeah. click on this option uh, on the top right corner below the Jinglong name on the top right corner, you can see there is a receipt option is there. Judo, can you yeah. click on that corner receipt on the right side, yeah. right top. Not, 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 right just on. below yes, the, ah, yeah, yeah, okay. yeah. Click ah, on yeah. that. And now you have to map that uh, data logger file, what you have created in your um, uh, computer. Like you have 10 serial number of data logger, list them in a Excel sheet on a column number A, one to one below each other. And just okay. uh, rename, rename that file as a data logger and just select that file and put it uh, here and confirm. So you will get all your uh, plant will be going to be get mapped under in installer account. Okay, which means it will individually display in the installer account, but if I put it to Excel file and if I upload it, it will be easy for me to upload all at once, right? Yeah, so you don't need to re-register it when because okay. your installer might be trying it to doing the re-register. That is why you're getting that message that it's already registered. Okay, thank you. I got the idea. And uh, I'm just uh, putting the India service email ID. So you can drop an email to our India service ID and our team can assist you in case if uh, you have any other questions. Yeah, already in touch in WeChat. Uh, if you could uh, bring up a group in uh, WhatsApp, it would be great because I know WeChat is no more available in India. <laughs> is there any way to contact you over uh, WhatsApp? Well, you can write an email always to us, so we can reply you on the email. Okay, but uh, the thing is, the response over WeChat or WhatsApp is more faster than email, right? So that's why I just want to go with the WhatsApp or WeChat. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. I think we do not have any more questions. I think that'll be today's training. Yeah, of course, you can get the slides uh, Lizzie can send you. And thank you, Travis and Nathush, for attending this as well. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, yeah. Cheers. Good job, Joel. Yeah, cheers. cheers. Yeah, we will see you in the next training. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay, thank you, guys. Cheers. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.